Well, we began with a look at what's happening on the campaign trail. Vice President Harris and former President Trump making stops in the South today as they make their closing arguments. Meanwhile, Democrats in the media, of course, of course, smearing Trump over his comments about Liz Cheney. And Aisha Hasney, she's joining us now from Gastonia, North Carolina, with more. Aisha? Hey there, you guys. Good morning to you. A lot of folks already lining up here for the big Trump rally this morning, this afternoon, I should say, here in North Carolina, the great state where more than half of the registered voters here have already voted early, either in person or mail-in ballots. The former president getting back into the campaign swing, trying to talk about policy. Economy is the number one issue here. While Democrats and the Harris campaign are trying to hang on to this moment. Watch. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, Will, let's uh, send, uh, send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. And I used to have, I'd, I'd have meetings with a lot of people, and she always wanted to go to war with people. So that was a full soundbite for you to hear the whole uh, context of what he was saying. But Vice President Harris says that that should disqualify him from this race. He has increased his violent rhetoric, Donald Trump has, about political opponents and in great detail, in great detail, suggested rifles should be trained on former Representative Liz Cheney. This must be disqualifying. The president, though, uh, defending his comments, and I believe you've got him on the phone right now. So let's go back to you guys. <laughs> you are correct. I you are thank correct. you so much for that <laughs> report. So let's do that. Let's bring in Donald Trump, GOP presidential nominee, 45th president of the United States. Uh, Mr. President, thanks for joining us on Fox and Friends Weekend. Good morning. It's good. Uh, what you, you heard that report. You were listening. Um, it, it wouldn't be a campaign down to the end if it weren't for complete mischaracterizations, whether it's CBS, you know, editing in answers. And in this case, taking completely out of context what you said about Liz Cheney on foreign policy and accusing you of wanting to execute her. Well, it's a fake news and they're trying to make something out of it. And it's so biased to start off with. And uh, all I'm saying is she was a nutty war hawk. You know, she wants to go to war with anybody that moves and uh, lose a lot of people, lose a lot of soldiers, put the nation in trouble. And uh, there's nobody tougher than me when it comes to protecting our nation. But that doesn't mean you have to kill everybody every day. And she was a nut job, just like her father. Her father got us into the Middle East. Uh, we spent $9 trillion. We ended up killing lots of people, including we lost a lot of people ourselves. But we you had, you had up both sides. We killed millions of people. We spent nine trillion dollars. You know, we got nothing. We blew the place up and we left, and we got nothing. We didn't keep the oil. We didn't do anything. So, you know, her father got rich doing that, and uh, she's uh, she's probably worse than the father because she's not as smart. President Trump, what you had to say the other day has been turned into. It's been distorted. It's been, as you said turn into fake news. It's a lie. And you can take a look at some of the headlines that's been put out there from the Drudge Report to the Washington Post to the New York Times. You know, you've talked about this in the past. At least when it comes to the broadcast networks, they operate on a free spectrum. Uh, in the public interest is the conditions under which they have access to a free spectrum. You've filed defamation suits in the past. It seems there needs to be some accountability for this level. It certainly isn't in the public interest. But for this level of mischaracterization and lie, what could, can be some form of accountability for the media? Well, there is. It's a very hard thing to do. But I think in the case of 60 Minutes, uh, 60 Minutes actually asked her a question. She gave an answer, which is this is your vice president or Harris or Kamala, whatever you'd like to call her. Nobody knows what to call her because most people don't even know who we're talking about. But uh, she gave an answer that was so bad and so incompetent that they decided to take the answer out in its entirety and put a new answer in. This was the most important question that she was asked, and the most important interview in 60 Minutes is part of the news organization of CBS. So what happens is they took it out and they gave a new answer. I said, whoa, that's a first. 
I've never seen that. So then we went to look at the whole interview, and they wouldn't show it, because how many questions did they do that with? And so on behalf of the people, we sued 60 Minutes and CBS, and we think their license should be taken away. I think it's the greatest breach. I think it's the, the greatest insult to the American citizens. Think of it. They ask her a, a question during an election, right up to the election, and the question is that of a very stupid person. That was her answer. And it was so bad. And, you know, they use the word word sound. I hate it. I, I just don't think it's the place. Yeah, there's something about it. It's not good. It doesn't fit me. But I'll tell you, they call it word salad. It was just a series of words that weren't connected. And there was something wrong with her. And they, they saw that. And so what they did is they took it out. And they put a different answer in, entirely different, okay, which was a better answer, you know, normal. In other words, this was not a great answer, but it was an answer at least. And they went with it, and they, that's what they broadcast. I think it's the biggest scandal in broadcast history. What they did, uh, nobody's ever heard of this before, where they take the answer yeah. and they put another answer in. So I sued them, and we'll see how the suit turns out, Do because you... I think it's a terrible thing, because our broadcasters have no value. Our, the media— is so corrupt in our country. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Are you, Mr. President, are you considering, because they're turning what you had to say into a call to execute Liz Cheney, are you considering defamation suits against the media enterprises who are putting that out today? Well, you know, the media is so dishonest, and they put out so many false stories that I'm not sure that we have enough lawyers in the country to handle it. Okay? <laughs> really, there's so many false things. I mean, almost everything is uh, they're, they're 90% uh, fake. And they put out answers, and you guys know, you understand it. You, you're legitimate, and you have a fantastic show. The chemistry in your show is unbelievable. And I don't have to tell you because you know that. But the chemistry, the three of you are unbelievable, so I congratulate you. That's not easy to do. But the... the uh, news is so corrupt. You know, fake, I came up with fake news many years ago, and I think it's great. I'm honored to have come up with it, but it's actually not strong enough. It's beyond fake. <laughs> it's so corrupt. It's Nobody's ever seen anything like it. So, uh, no, I wouldn't think I would, but you know what I was doing with her was very simple. Uh, she was somebody that I met with in the White House, along with others. She always wanted to go to war with anybody. If Somebody stepped one foot in the wrong direction. She'd like to blow them away. You know, she, <laughs> and I saw so I call her uh, Madam Tough Person. I said, oh, she's such a tough one. Oh, you know, jokingly, sarcastically, I'd say, oh, we have this tough one coming. Every time I saw I mean, literally, if, if, if there was a drone that happened to fall down on our property, she'd say, we're going to go to war with Russia. Let's start a new war with Russia. So yeah. she was. And by the way, those are not tough people. Those are stupid people. OK. And she was always, like, you know, pressing for word. In fact, it's why I had a fallout. I didn't want to deal with her too much because she was always, uh, like, difficult. But she was like a war hawk. So what I was saying is this is a big shot. Think she's hot stuff. Her father got us into war, killed millions of people. He pushing Bush around. And, you know, her father was one of them. And stupid guys like Bolton, too. You know, Bolton was a dummy. And what happens is we don't need that. You know, I had no wars. And yet we had the strongest country. We were totally respected right. by China, by Russia, by everybody. But you don't have to kill people every day to do that. I had no wars, but I rebuilt our military. We, it was peace through strength, and it was a beautiful thing. But what I said about her is that a lot of times these bullies, she's a bully. She's a nice female bully, okay? And a lot of times these bullies, they're really weak people. And all I said is, let's see how she does. I said, put a gun in her hand. Then let her go out and let her face the enemy with a gun in her hand, and they'll have nine people or 12 people or 100 people. I said, uh, let's see how she stands up, because I say she wouldn't have the guts to do it. You know, you have a lot of these Washington people, and they sit there and they say, let's go to war here. Let's. They would start wars. If I weren't here, I would have had wars all over the place. I actually defeated ISIS. I inherited that. But I didn't have any wars in 82 years. I'm the only president. And yet during my term, we were more respected. I will tell you, President Xi and Putin and Kim Jong-un, all of them, they respected me more than any other president for many years, maybe centuries, if you want to know the truth. Total respect. And they didn't know where I was coming from. I took out hundreds of millions of dollars for our country from China, hundreds of millions of taxes and tariffs. 
And yet I had a very good relationship with President Xi. He couldn't have loved me, but we did. We had a very good relationship. I had a good relationship with everybody. I try and convince the fake news that's a good thing. You know, when somebody like Russia, as an example, has uh, 1,500 nuclear weapons, it's not bad when you get along with the head person. Mm. I will tell you what, Russia never would have gone into Ukraine if I were president. Never. Not even a chance. October 7th never would have happened because Iran was broke. They had no money. October 7th with Israel never would have happened. And the leaving of, if you take a look, the leaving of Afghanistan, the way we did it, it was so bad. Leaving was good. I was all set up. I was going to leave with dignity and strength, take all of our equipment. They kept billions of dollars worth of equipment. Best of, they displayed it two weeks ago in your show, going down a boulevard, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, we, we need smart people. People like her get us in trouble. Uh, yep. It costs billions of dollars, kills millions of people. And I say, and I say she's a coward, and I say a lot of people like that. Those people, the bullies we call them, those people are always cowards. Yeah. Listen, I definitely think war and peace is on the ballot, and I think people appreciate you calling out the warmongers, but also the fact that they made money off of that, and I think people appreciate uh, that. I, wa I want to move to this because, you know, I didn't think you could top the McDonald's troll, but then you showed up to that rally in a garbage truck in, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I think as you're closing this message, uh, th this, ca this campaign, this, uh, this, this campaign of yours, uh, yesterday at the rally in, in Milwaukee, you said you can't lead America if you don't love America and if you don't love Americans. And so that's obviously a reference to the to the garbage comment and so many of the other comments against women saying, you know, that they, you know, can't, you know, uh, they're, they're not strong enough or coming from some of her supporters. So what's your closing message about your love for America, why you're doing this? Because a lot of people are wondering that, you know, as you've taken bullets and so forth um, this summer. Well, it's an interesting question. I mean, a lot of people ask uh, combinations of that question. I could have a very nice life. I wouldn't have to be talking to you right now, which I actually love doing. I could be on a beach someplace. Those beautiful waves would be smacking me in the face with that nice salt water. So nice. I could get a nice, beautiful tan. My beautiful skin would be nice and tan. Dark. <laughs> but you know what? I, I couldn't think of even doing it. I love what I'm doing because I'm saving the country. Our country's in trouble. We have... Two incompetent leaders, very incompetent. He's incompetent, she's incompetent. It's only a question of who's worse. I believe she's actually worse than him, if you can believe it. And she is doing a terrible job. The world is laughing. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a big deal, very big deal. Actually, couldn't be worse timing for them. So we came up, they came up with the worst jobs report, you know, I would say in history almost. I mean, but it goes back many years uh, where 12,000 jobs, that's like for... That's like for a little piece of a company. 12,000 jobs were created. 100,000 manufacturing jobs were lost. 150,000 jobs were lost. It's the worst. It's a depression-type statement. It was the worst statement I've seen in decades, it, it, just before the election. Think of it. They created, through fraud, they created 818,000 fake jobs. It had to be taken off the books. And they wanted to do that, but they wanted to be able to quietly take it off the books after the election. Think of that. They created 818,000 fake jobs to make the numbers look better. And a whistleblower blew the whistle and said they, they, they were a fraud. And then they, as you saw last night, if you saw my speech, they created another 112,000 fake jobs last month. So almost a million fake jobs so that they look better. And they were going to announce that they were fake. They wouldn't announce it that way. They would do it where they're taking back and they were going to take those jobs back after the election, announce it after. But they didn't get through the election because a whistleblower blew the whistle. I love that whistleblower, whoever that whistle, because that whistleblower did a very good thing for the country. And so they created almost a million jobs and had to take it back. Anyway, their job numbers are so bad I've never seen anything like it. And you have an election coming up in three days, four days. Think of it. And she should not be allowed. Look, whether you like Joe Biden or not, I'm not a big fan. He got 14 million votes. She got no votes. She got no votes. And then they talk about I'm a threat to democracy. They're a threat to democracy, <laughs> a major threat. 
And she, I don't think she's qualified to run whatsoever. And, you know, she likes to use my term. I've been saying that she's not qualified to run. And so all of a sudden she uses my term. Every time I have a term like no tax on tips, three weeks later they go no tax on tips. But they only said it a couple of times because they don't mean it. I mean it. Big difference. But they are running the worst campaign. And I think we're leading by a lot. I mean, we're going to have to see t tomorrow, next day, we're going to see numbers that come fairly mm -hmm. close. But the big thing is for people to get out and vote because we have to turn our country around. We are in a failing nation. This is a failing nation. This is a nation in decline. And we can turn it around, but we have to get out and vote. But these people are very dishonest people, and they should not be they almost should not be involved with government. Well, Mr. President, uh, you know, all of us have been in diners across the country, and there's so much always going on in the news, but it always does come back to, I made money under Trump, or mm. my money went further mm. under Trump. Uh, and, and now, because of inflation and the economy writ large, uh, I don't have the same kind of opportunity I had. You just talked about those job numbers, how they revised them for months, uh, basically had to be honest about numbers that were inflated. Now they come in at 12,000 jobs. That's not even, that's barely good for a county, uh, mm -hmm. let alone a country. Uh, yet your critics will say, well, your tariffs are going to, that you say, are going are gonna to crush our country and create inflation. What do you say to people that criticize your economic approach to how you bring prosperity back to the country? Yeah, well, stupid people say that, Pete. <laughs> the most beautiful word in the dictionary is tariff. Now, for purposes of your viewers, let me change it. I'll say love and religion, okay? And I'll make tariff the third most beautiful word. But... <laughs> The most beautiful word is there. It's going to make us rich, and we're going to tax companies if they don't build here. In other words, if you don't build your plant in the United States, we're going to tariff your product because we don't want to really want your product if it's going to be made in Japan or China or someplace else. We really don't. And I had that going good. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. I took in a lot of money from other countries. It was really rocking. Uh, we and then we had an election that unfortunately uh, didn't exactly go the right way. But you know that whole thing. I won't talk. I won't talk about it because I want you people to keep your jobs. Okay, <laughs> people are so afraid. You know, people are so afraid to talk about it. You're not allowed to talk about an election, so I won't do it. You three guys, if you lost your jobs, I would be the most. Afraid. Can you imagine? Say I cost those three people their jobs. This is the worst. That would be the worst thing I think I've ever done in my entire life. Anyway, there aren't too many like you. We have to keep you around, so I won't talk about it. But look, uh, it's, we need tariffs. They're going to bring in billions of dollars. They're going to bring our budget. They're going to bring us factories. We're going to uh, – Detroit will be a mecca. Let me tell you one quick story. They're going to build the largest plant anywhere in the world for autos, auto plant. In Mexico, near the border, it would have been bigger almost than all of Michigan, every plant. It would be super modern, the largest – and I'm sure you'd love to know that it was owned by China. And it was all said, a friend of mine who builds plants, he's one of the best in the world, maybe the best, probably the best. I said, let me see a plant. He said, no, well, there's none here, but you can go to Mexico. They're building big plants in Mexico. So I said, I don't want to go to Mexico. I want to see it here. He said, well, the only ones that you can see are in Mexico. They're the big ones. I said, I'm not going, forget it. But anyway, I thought about it. Then I realized if they build that plant, Michigan's going to be wiped out. All of Michigan, everything, but Detroit, is going to be totally wiped out. And the smaller, you know, plants they have, they're all going to be closed up. It's going to be a disaster. So I announced that I was going to put tariffs on any cars made from that plant and any cars coming in from Mexico. And I just did that, and it was interesting, and didn't hear much about it. And then yesterday, the other day, I said to my friend who builds the plants, how's that plant coming along that you told me about a year ago? Sir, uh, they have decided not to go forward with the project. Why? Because they think you're going to win the election, and if you win the election, uh, they know you're going to put tariffs on the plant, and they're going to lose their shirt, and they're not going to build it. Think of that. I stopped the biggest plant in the world just by telling them, you want to build a plant and hurt our country and destroy Michigan and hurt South Carolina and others that do it, Tennessee. We have a lot of areas that build cars. But Michigan in particular would have been hurt. It was aimed at Michigan, literally aimed at Michigan. They wanted to destroy Michigan, and I did my tariff thing. And without even being president, I stopped the largest plant anywhere in the world that was going to be so big. They were going to rip us really big league, sell them right into our country, and we would not have been able to compete. 
Now, I said to him, I told my friend, go back to him and tell him, we'd love to have you build your plant, but only if you build it in the United States of America. And you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if they came and we built it in Detroit or someplace. So this is what you have to, you know, this is uh, real policy. That's why people like me. That's why people like me. But when you see how stupid these trade deals are that people have made over the years with the chip in, and I, tra- I, I change a lot of them. And just to finish, you know, uh, I watch Kamala say, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we're go- she's the worst ever on the border. And Border Patrol endorsed me, you know, with the best. They say he's the greatest president we've ever had. We give him full endorsement. And they said she's the worst. Of everybody we've ever dealt with, she's the most incompetent. She's the worst. They actually said that. I said, that's the greatest endorsement I've ever had. Uh, by the way, Elon Musk endorsed me. Kennedy endorsed Everybody's, almost everybody's endorsed me. And if I don't win, our country is in really big trouble. Because you see those numbers that came out yesterday, and those numbers are the worst I've ever seen. And it's going to get much worse than that. Mm. And the only thing worse than that is a depression, like in 1929. And that's where we're headed if I don't win. So, uh, you know, and I just want to thank you guys. You've been so great. On the Cheney thing, it's a media, I call it a media hoax. I said, oh, we have another media hoax. Well, they had another one. So we had the biggest day ever. Madison Square Garden said in the history of Madison Square Garden, Jim Dolan told me this, the owner, he said, did a great job. We had Madison Square Garden filled to the rafters, but more importantly, we could have filled it up 10 times. The people, the the love too, the love, it went all the way down to the Hudson River. Most viewers don't know what that means, but that means blocks away, uh, massive groups of people. They couldn't even get near the garden. People from Madison Square Garden told me they've never seen anything like it in the history of Madison Square Garden. There was love. And it was a great triumph. And by the way, totally peaceful. There were no riots. There were no, the police were great, New York's finest. But Madison Square Garden, it was unbelievable. Well, I guess somebody put on a comedian and he joked. He was a comedian. He joked. He mentioned Puerto Rico. And all of a sudden, the Democrats, and they are good at this stuff, by the way. That's the only thing they're good at. They're no good at policy. They're no good at government. They're good at other things. They're very good at cheating. But other than that, they're not good at anything. So let me just tell you. So they come up, and a comedian put in early in the show, as a filler, in all fairness, I guess he said some joke. I haven't heard the joke, but he said some joke, and he mentioned Puerto Rico. All of a sudden, they come out with something about Puerto Rico. Nobody's been better to Puerto Rico than me. I saved Puerto Rico when they had had some, some of the worst hurricanes really bad. I brought in the hospital ship, the Mercy. I brought in this massive hospital ship. I brought. There's nobody, and Puerto Ricans will tell you that, nobody's done more for Puerto Rico than me. They made this one comedian telling one little joke early in the show when nobody had even started going into the arena practically. Uh, they made this comedian, and they made the whole weekend, and they they took out this gorgeous, unbelievable, patriotic evening, and they sort of stained it a little bit by a comedian that I have no idea who he is. He's a man that was put there by very good people and well-meaning people. He mentioned Puerto Rico, and they made it like a big deal. These are professional people. And I always say, if they would use that genius, okay, because their genius for doing bad is quite good, actually, if they would use that to make America great again, we would have the greatest (laughs) country. It would be so nice, and everybody would love them. It doesn't, don't. it doesn't look like turning that comedian's joke into three days of a news cycle actually work. You know, the Hispanic polling, which we can show on the screen, is definitely trending in your direction versus Kamala okay. Harris, the Thank way that, <laughs> that voters, uh, Latino voters are looking to go. But speaking of demographics, by the way, Rachel and I were there at Madison Square Garden that night. We saw firsthand the environment. We saw firsthand the crowd. Um, they're looking at demographics, Mr. President. They're looking at shaving off. We talked about Latinos. They're looking at women. That you know, Pete mentioned we we were at diners this week. I was in Georgia at a diner, and women talked about the economy, which you were just talking about. But what they want to talk to women about is I don't know uh, the Handmaid's Tale. They want to make them think they should be afraid of their husbands. I want you to watch this ad that features uh, Julia Roberts. You can vote any way you want. 
and no one will ever know. Did you make the right choice? Sure did, honey. It's about women lying to their husbands that they're actually voting for Kamala. Mark Cuban has suggested you don't surround yourself with strong, independent, intelligent women. What is your message to women? Well, I know Mark very well. He's a very insecure guy. Can't hit a golf ball more than 50 yards. He's weak physically and mentally, as far as I'm concerned. But I've known him for a long time. Uh, he would call me in the White House incessantly. And finally, I just couldn't take his calls anymore. And then he went over to the other side. And he's a guy that wants publicity. Uh, when he said that, and you know, he's totally retracted his statement, like, you know, weak people always do. They retract their statements. But he was hit by some of the strongest, not human beings, women. He was hit by the strongest people that it wasn't men, women, it was women. He was hit by women that make men look like babies because so, you know many of the women that I deal with and that I have, and I could go over the list, but the list is long, including the fact that I happen to be married to a rather strong woman who just right now is the number one bestseller in the whole wide world in her book, Melania. Uh, so, no, I've surrounded myself with women. I've given women chances, too. I mean, I had Kellyanne as the head of uh, my 2016 Big Victory. Uh, Susie Wiles is strong. You know, she's the daughter of Pat Summerall, right? Good, good genetics there. And I have tremendously struggled. In fact, I've been actually accused of the other. They said, couldn't it be like, couldn't you get some women that aren't as strong? I, I have more problems the other way until Mark Cuban came along. But, you know, Mark, I'm so disappointed at Julia Roberts because I look and it's, she's going to look back on that and she's going to cringe that, did I really say that? It doesn't say much for her relationship, but I'm sure she has a great relationship. But the wives and husbands, that, I don't think that's the way they deal. I mean, can you imagine a wife not telling a husband who she's voting for? Do you ever hear anything like that? Even if you have a horrible, if you had a bad relationship, you're going to tell your husband that it's a ridiculous thing. <laughs> so stupid. She's going to look back some days and say, did I really make that? You know, they're into this thing. Look, I'm running against the worst candidate probably ever put up by a major party. She's grossly incompetent. Uh, she can't put two sentences together. And you take a look at the 60-minute piece, seriously, look at the answers she gave. And now we want to see, by the way, whether or not they did that with other answers and they refused to give us the papers. So we should. I'm, you know, I'm doing it for the people. But somebody has to do it. Um, ABC is, I've always said, very corrupt. Uh, they asked me during the debate, this guy, uh, what's his name, asked me so many questions, just always questions. He said, no, crime is down. I said, no, crime is up. Crime is down. I'm sorry. Crime is down. David Muir, he said, crime is down. I said, what's wrong with you? Crime's not down. Something. And he said, crime is down. Well, you shouldn't have done that. Uh, one day later, it was announced. Hey, I have some friends in government, I guess. They announced the crime stats, and crime was up 45%, okay? Right. Uh, the, the news, I'll tell you what. To make America great, you really do have to get the news shaped up because the news is an embarrassment. To our country. And you look at the Washington Post, it's going bust. You look at the New York Times, it's doing so badly. But the Washington Post, everyone's quitting, it's leaving, everyone. It's like crazy what's going on there right. because they don't have credibility anymore. They have no credibility. And the right. media has to have credibility. And the media right. doesn't have, it doesn't have any credibility. No doubt. Your show has a lot of credibility, by the Press way. President Trump, I want to ask you one last question before we go. A, a lot of people don't know that the Harris campaign has spent 20 times more than your campaign on Hispanic media, and yet you are winning over Hispanics. Uh, what's your message to them? Why do you think you're resonating with them better than any other Republican president, really e even surpassing uh, George W. Bush? Because I love Hispanics, and I respect Hispanics, and they're great people. I mean, I happen to be talking to one right now, actually. <laughs> but I love Hispanics, I do. And I love you, Rachel. But <laughs> the fact is, they're great people. They're very energetic, tremendous entrepreneurial skill. I deal with Hispanics all the time. They can be tough as hell. They have great entrepreneurial skill. I mean, they're just smart, good. They love the country. You know, I. It, it's funny. When I said you need a wall. It turned out to be, you know, I built 571 miles of wall 
And you know who you, everyone said you're going to lose the Spanish vote, the Hispanic vote. It's gone if you do that. Don't build it. Don't. I said this, or I have to do what's right. Do you know who wants the wall more than anybody? The Hispanics, because they get it. They don't want to have people from prisons coming into our country like we do. You know that we've taken in in the last three years under this, these two failed people, we've taken in 13,099 convicted murderers. Many of these people can, killed more than one person, okay? They're in our country now. They're in. They have emptied their jails and prisons and mental institutions and insane asylums. This is just degrees of the institution. But right. they've emptied their jails, their prisons, their mental institutions, their insane asylums. They've emptied them into the United States of America. Thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are major criminals. And who would do that unless you hate the country or are very stupid? I mean, there's only two reasons. You hate the country or you're stupid. Mm -hmm. And who would do that to our country? And, you know, you talk about inflation and you talk about the bad job numbers and all of that. The, the worst job, I'll tell you what, it is a gift to me. I finally got a gift. I, I'm running against two people that just put out the worst job numbers, which is a big deal, the biggest deal, economically the biggest thing that happened. They came out five days before an election. Think of that. I finally got a gift. Now, I hope people realize how bad this is. They're the worst numbers ever. But the Hispanic people are incredible people. But I just saw it. I was shocked to see it because Fox never gives me good polls. Never. They should get a new pollster because they're always wrong. But I just saw a poll. I assume it was a Fox poll where I'm leading with Hispanics. If you go back and look at uh, Mitt Romney, there's another real beauty, by the way. Go back and look at Mitt Romney and how what, what did he have, like 5 percent of the Hispanic vote or something? And they had me down at, what, 51 or something, 51, 52 percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was substantially leading a Democrat with Hispanic voters. And, mm -hmm. and look at how well we're doing with the African-American population. But there is a number that's going to come up, and they're trying to hold it till after the election. And that's unemployment for black people. It is unbelievable what's happening to them. They are being decimated. The millions of people, you, and you hear it, and you don't read it in the news. They don't want to talk about it. They hide it, but they know it. It's coming, but they're trying to hide it till after the election. Mm. Black people in particular are losing their jobs to the migrants that are pouring into our country. Well, and it, by it, the way, the migrants are coming from all over the world, not just South right. America, but they're coming from all over the world. And the black people are losing their jobs. People that have had a job for 20 years, good job, good people. They have a house. They have a mortgage on the house, all that. They're being fired and being replaced with the people that are coming in, the migrants, coming in illegally into our country. And the other thing is migrant crime. The migrant crime is massive. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and it's at a level of viciousness. It is so vicious. You see it. I play it all the time. I, at the, you know, I play clips all the time. Uh, Jocelyn and uh, I mean, we I could go I could give you right now in this call. Right. I could give you 10. But thousands of people are suffering with this vicious mm. migrant migrant crime. But if you look at the black, you should demand it because they have the numbers or they're very close to having the numbers when those numbers come out. And here's the problem. They're going to come out right after the election. They're trying to hold it till after the election. Well, the black jobs are being people with black jobs, black. They black people that are working so hard and they've had jobs for 20 years, they're being fired and they're being replaced. And when you look at those numbers, it's going to make your job numbers look relatively mm. good by comparison. Mm. It's a big problem. Well, the, the, terrible, the, the, terrible the numbers, thing. the numbers that we do have, uh, Mr. President, are on the economy. It's like getting an F on your final report card on the most important subject of the year. Yeah. Uh, and that's what yeah. has been uh, has yeah. been delivered. They just got an F. Thank you. That's a very good way. Of <laughs> right. That's right. Well, uh, Mr. Well, that was nice. I got help. Uh, there we go. <laughs> an F on the report card. Mr. President, we know you have a very busy day. Uh, You're very generous with your time, giving us a half an hour on Fox and Friends weekend. We wish you luck. Uh, on the campaign trail and, and safety as well, considering what you're up against. Uh, President Trump, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. You President. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks. Great to talk to you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.